up, buddy? You know what? I just wanted for you to look over some of these x-rays of some of the endo that I've done in the last Why don't you set your machine years. right here? You know what I'm saying? And here we go. This is, a, this is a patient. So this is the... And these aren't all the films. I didn't get all the films that I took. It's okay. But this is the preoperative. Okay, so we have an upper, um, you know, tooth number three. And... Um, You're are, Canadian. No, I'm from Idaho, man. Oh, that's right. Because I was saying, in, I thought for some reason you're from Canada, but you would use you would have said it was what 40, 46? Four, four, six, yeah. Yeah, okay, go ahead. But I understood three perfectly. Oh no, no, it would be uh, the guy I'm sitting next to is from Canada. It'd be a thirty-six. Yeah, it would be three. Yeah. No, no, it'd be it'd be four six. Because isn't upper, this on the left side? Yeah, you're right. So yeah, so yeah, yeah, it'd be three six. You're right. You're totally right. Okay, so go ahead. I see you're in there. In the Powell, in the MB, in the DV. Okay. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I do not find very many MB2s. Okay. okay. I'm not even going to pretend that I do because I don't. That's okay. <laughs> but right. you're going to find more after this course. Yeah. So yeah. you better have a fee that lets you find them. That's for sure. I mean, you're not going to look very hard if I tell you you're going to look hard and get paid less. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. They, they're not there. <laughs> so, no, I'll have a discussion about it. Okay, so now you're fitting cones, so you, you have a beautiful shape developing in the MB, and you can trim the cone. The Powell, uh, you're pretty close to the edge. I can't, there's some line there I can't quite see. I'm reading your, uh, I won't touch your screen, but I can see the PDL coming around like this. So it looks a little bit short then. Well, maybe. Here's part of your lesion, I think, but I can't really see where this part of the root is, but it, it looks, go ahead, keep going. We'll probably see it in another view. There it is. I would use that level right there and pack it. Okay. I mean, do you agree that that's maybe a quarter to a half millimeter short? Yes, I do. But do but we also agree it could actually be one millimeter long because yeah. we're, we're looking at a two-dimensional picture of a three-dimensional object. Mm -hmm. So it radiographically in two dimensions, you're just a hair short but you would, this is where your paper points can help you adjust. And that's one of the things that I'm, that I'm, still, I'm still having a little bit of a hard time just because I've never used the technique. It's okay. And so basically you put the paper point in and if you see blood on it, you know that like that, let's say half millimeter where there's blood, you know that that is outside of the, of the apex of the canal. And so then if, and so you would measure that and you'd say, okay, this is let's say 20. And let's say I had my, my cone at like a 20.5, I would know I'd need to cut off half a millimeter. Is that kind of how you do it? Yeah. Okay. Let's go through it again. Um, because it was a sincere question, and I answered it over there, but let's go through it one more time, one-on-one, -on -one, because okay. maybe you'll ask me a different question than you didn't ask over there, or maybe you'll hear it different, or maybe I'll understand it different, and then okay. we'll get more on the same page. Shape your canal as usual. Okay. When you're done shaping the canal, use some kind of a suction device and pull out all your irrigant out, okay. of, the, out of the canal. All right. Now, grab a paper point, grab it at the length that you think you're at. Okay. So what it, let's just say for fun, it's 22. Okay. It's all 22. Right. You think it's 22, grab 22, put it in, it comes out, last third of it's moist. Okay. Grab another one, come in, last two millimeters is moist. Grab another one, and now it's pretty much drying to 22. Okay. Now set the paper point at 22 and a half. Okay. Go in, and you notice, oh, it just spots a little bit. Okay. 22 was golden. Okay. What if you go in at 22 and the very end of it was red? One millimeter of that was red. Well, I'd go, what if I provoked a little bleeding out here and there's bleeding coming out? Let me try another one at 22. Okay. And it goes in and it comes out red. I believe if it's at red at 21, I believe my cone is one millimeter through. Okay. It's right. one millimeter long. Okay. So I will trim it back, even though radiographically it might appear short. But I know in three dimensions, we're right on the money. Okay, I got it. So okay. that part of the paper point is consistently clean, white, and dry is inside the canal. And that part that's wet could be red when I say wet, or it could just be clear. But when you push it against your glove fingernail, it kind of accordions. Uh -huh. And if it accordions, then that is the part that is beyond the foramen. Okay. So you can be very comfortable that you have just dialed in final working length. And this is more accurate than any of the working length determinations that you tried prior, which could be 
film based mm -hmm. or it might have even been what? A um, like Apex Locator? Apex Locator. Yeah, I would even believe this more than that. Really? Yeah. Okay. The only problem is it happens at the end. Yeah. I mean, it would have been great if we could have done paper point drawing when we were sliding a tin file length, but we don't have enough shape to put a paper point in to actually discover this okay. method. So this is a good method, but it's only good after you've shaped the canal. But by then, if you were off on your root, root determination, the whole mm -hmm. preparation could be a little bit flawed. Okay. I mean, you know, if you're working too short, we could have a ledge uh -huh. or a block canal. If we were working well beyond because we were off a little bit, we could have been ripping a little bit the foramen or maybe a lot. So, unfortunately, we can't tell, use this method until we have enough shape to get a paper point in. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the very end that you determine that. But it's a great way to dial in your final, final, final working length. Okay. So when we pack, you know, my mentor used to say to me, Cliff, are you treating the x-ray or are you treating the patient? So sometimes we try to get beautiful x-rays, but remember there's a, there's a person attached to that tooth yeah. and it, it makes a difference. So. It might look short, but the paper point, if it tells you that you know it's drying right back to here, then mm -hmm. trim your cone back because no, that's the that's the portal. No, I can I can okay, I got that. Thank you so much. That's that's very clear to me now. I see I see how you're doing that. Thank you so much. And then you'll start trying it, and you know you'll you know don't get uh, too overexcited or depressed based on your first five or six or seven canals. But as you start to do that, you're going to start going, I get this. Yeah. I totally know when something, like I'll exaggerate. You see somebody and they're kind of swollen and you open their tooth and a lot of drainage uh -huh. and you're working along, you know, and maybe you're drying the canal and like half the paper point's wet. Well, you're still getting productive ape periapical drainage back up into the canal. Yeah. So we're not cutting the cone back to mid root. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm can, joking. <laughs> no, but I can see where I can see where you're coming from. Okay, keep that. going. Show me. So we go through here, and this is my my down pack. Yeah. Alrighty. And I was I was I'm disappointed in it because I it looks like there's some sort of a I don't, I, mean, I didn't get a shoulder puff for one on this one right here, but there seems to be some sort of a it's not. It like, you got a little bulge. It, it, it bulged right but, there. But have you ever thought that's you know. bulging at you or away from you in the primary beam? You're looking at a Paolo root. And I'll just push this back okay. a little bit. You're looking at a Paolo root. And, you know, we, we like to see a shape that is smooth and flowing. And you see maybe just a little bulge here. And it might be a little bit more opaque. Do you notice that? Mm -hmm. yeah. There might be a little bit of opacity. Mm -hmm. So that's that view. What if we flip the tooth 90 degrees and look at it from another angle? What if, what if it looked like this? Well, maybe you just filled in this a little resorb defect. Yeah, all right. okay. Because, you know, if you go back to the beginning, this thing could have looked like this. You know, and then you get your shape going. And we, I would not want you to come clear out to here to say you included it, because that might be a reduction of wall thickness. And then you're weakening the tooth materially. So remember, we're looking at these two-dimensional objects, but if you're using warm gutta perch and you showed me your down pack, mm -hmm. there's no way that you are not just moving material into space. Yeah. So I think I'm celebrating that. And I, it looks a little whiter to me. So what you could have done is this is kind of a distal angle because mm -hmm. the DB is moving anterior, mm -hmm. MB is freed up, moving anterior. You could have had your assistant come back and come really mesial, throwing the MB root across the Powell, and that might even be uh, more interesting. Okay. So I'm always getting two views of my post-op because some views are just ho-hum, mm -hmm. and then you move the cone, you're going, holy shit. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll, I mean, the classic tooth is this one. So you got, you got two systems, right? Mm -hmm. And you're thinking when you look, take a certain view that it looks like that. Mm -hmm. But if you really swing your cone around, sometimes you'll find that... You get it? Oh my God, there's an anastomosing. Mm -hmm. Didn't even see that. Because okay. as you come around, you can superimpose this canal over the other canal and you'll never see between them but if you get that off angle go oh gosh there's the step ladders there's the there's the anastomosing so sometimes if you see that clinically 
I wouldn't even fret about it, but see, okay. you're really meticulous, so you're saying, what is that? Uh, exactly. Well, get another view. Okay. Well, get another see. view. And, and Say that, to your assistant, let's get a mesial view. And this totally helped me understand what that could be, you know what I mean? And why, why I think you're why, moving why, material why, into, yeah. into some anatomy. Yeah. And sometimes you'll take a post-op and it'll look like this. This is like really white. Well, that's a lateral canal coming at me or away from me in the primary beam. Okay, all right, I can see that, okay. But, it, but you'll say, God, it's all, uh, look at how dense, a little white spot right in there. That's, that's something coming at you. Because you got material superimposed over material. Mm -hmm. So you got your... And that's what you're getting, it's much wider, it's much more radio opaque. More material. More material. Exactly. You get more opacity.